Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Thought of the Week. Now, I, in case you've forgotten, I'm Rachel, and this is Hayley, and we're going to continue looking at the miracles in the Bible that we see Jesus did. Now, I hope you had a really good half term and you're feeling all rest and relaxed and ready to start school again. So, Hayley, I thought we could play a game. Real word or fake word? And by real words, are they in the dictionary? And by fake words, they're not in the dictionary. And if they are real words, what do you think they mean? Should we give it a go? We can try. I am rubbish at this. Word number one, flibbity gibbet. No, that's just a made up load of letters put together. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it's a particularly... It would be, for those doing phonics, I'm not quite sure how you would be able to sound that one out, but flibbity gibbet. So that's a made up word. So I've made that one up. Yes, it sounds know. like a frog. I haven't. <laughs> it does sound like it's a frog, but it means a silly person who talks too much. No way. It is. It's actually in the dictionary. I think I might be a bit of a flibbity gibbet sometimes. I think me too. Yeah, a flibbity gibbet. Shall we try another one? So far, it's 1-0 to the dictionary. Skidaddle. Yeah, I know this one. Is it a real word or a fake word? It's a real word. My mum used to tell me to do this quite a lot. <laughs> Skidaddle. So if it's a real word, what do you think it means? It means go away really quickly. <laughs> it means to run up. So if somebody tells you to skidaddle... It means yeah. quick, get out of here, shoe, run. Yeah, I that got told to do that a lot. Away from wherever they were running from. Or their mum told them to skedaddle from the kitchen. Yeah, possibly because I was a flippity dibbit. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try another one? Yeah. Glitterati. No, that, you just put two words together there. Okay, so what two words do you think I've glued together? Well, glitter... Yeah. And paparazzi. Which means press. Newspapers. Yeah. Sorry, Hayley. It's a no. Rich, it's rich, famous and fashionable people whose activities are of interest to the public and are written about in newspapers and magazines. So pop stars, film stars, the royal family, they would no. all be part no. of karate. I'm going to have to look it up. You are, but I promise you, it's in the dictionary. Should we try another one? It's two to the dictionary, one to you at the moment. Should we try another one? Collie wobbles. No. <laughs> you <laughs> made it up. <laughs> you think I've made that one up? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is actually in the dictionary. It's a true word, and it means... That uncomfortable feeling in your stomach when you're caused by feelings of nervousness and slight fear. So if you're feeling nervous or slightly anxious about something and, you, and your stomach begins to feel funny, that's known as the collie wobbles. I can't believe there's an actual name for that feeling. <laughs> there is. It's the collie wobbles. So if you're Blimey. suffering from the collie wobbles, it helps to go and talk to somebody about how you're feeling. Because that's what's making you feel a bit rough. So, another one. Hangry. Oh, I know this one. Yeah, this, this is an actual word. It is an actual word. I would agree. It is an actual word. And it means to become angry because you're feeling hungry. Yeah. So it's those two words merged together, isn't it? It's a mixture of angry and hungry glued together. Do you ever suffer from being hangry, Hayley? Maybe. I think most of us do sometimes, don't we? But this is a fairly new word to the dictionary. This was only added to the English dictionary in 2018. But today's miracle that we're going to look at is from Luke chapter, no, it's from John chapter six. And it's about a big crowd of people who were on the verge of getting hangry. I know that, that feeling. Not do. Can you imagine lots and lots of people 
getting hungry all at the same time. 5,000. 5,000. Amazing, isn't it? But in John chapter 6, it tells us that there was a big crowd of people. Now, sometimes if somebody's amazing is coming, you might travel a little bit of a distance to go and see them or hear them speak or sing or whatever. And Jesus had an amazing reputation of healing people and helping people and teaching people all about things that no one else seemed to understand. So people would walk miles to hear the things that Jesus had to say because it was so amazing. And on this particular occasion, we hear how all the people had gathered and as Jesus walked, they walked with him and it came to the end of the day and people were getting hungry. But there was a massive crowd of 5,000 gathered. And the people were getting a bit hungry. And the people were beginning to wonder how they were going to get home. And because they were hungry, they didn't want to faint on the way home because that wouldn't be good. So Jesus saw what was happening and saw that these people were hungry. So he said to Philip, one of his disciples, Go into town and buy them bread. Philip looked at them and went, what? Do you know how much it would cost to feed that many people? It would take a month's salary to feed all of these people a few crumbs of bread. We can't do that. But Jesus knew that that wasn't really the answer, that there was a better way that he could show how amazing he was. There was a boy in the crowd and this boy had his packed lunch with him. Now I don't know what's in your packed lunch or what you're going to have for lunch today but in this boy's packed lunch there were five small barley loaves and two little fish. Now that's not going to go very far is it? That would be one little boy's packed lunch so what on earth is the, how is this going to be the answer to all of these people? The little boy bought his lunch and gave it to Jesus. Now, I imagine, it doesn't say in the Bible, but I imagine that he went, I know it's not a lot, but this is what I have. Will this help? That's what I imagine happened. But he gave his packed lunch to Jesus. And in the Bible, it says that Jesus lifted it up, prayed, and the disciples started handing it out. After everybody was satisfied, and by that they'd had enough to eat, they weren't hungry anymore, they had enough energy to get home, Jesus said to his disciples, go and collect all the leftovers. It was one boy's pat lunch. Do you think there's any leftovers? For 12 baskets full of leftovers. No way. Twelve. Not just was not just was the boys' pat lunch enough, but there was more than enough and plenty for everyone to have everything that they needed, which I find amazing. I imagine people were thinking that was amazing, and I can see why that would be classed as a miracle, don't you? Yeah, I think I can see why. I mean. Just wow. I know. Wow. 5,000 people fed from one boy's pat lunch. That's Incredible. an awful lot. But the thing that strikes me about that part of the Bible is the fact that it was that boy's willingness to share what he had. Mm. He could have kept it for himself. Just thought, you know, it's okay, it's okay, I can have my pat lunch on my way home and nobody else will notice. But he didn't. He shared what he had and he gave what he had to Jesus. And something amazing happened that had a massive impact on everybody that was there. Just that small thing affected lots and lots and lots of people because he was willing 
to share what he had. That makes me wonder what I could share. Just like when I go shopping, I quite often ring people and go, I'm going to the shop. Is there anything that you need? Because that's me sharing what I'm doing. But I wonder if there's any way that other people can do just little things that could share. And maybe those little things could end up being great big things like these miracles. I don't know how many of you have heard of the random acts of kindness. Have you heard of the random acts of kindness, Rachel? I've heard <laughs> about it. I don't know very much about it, though. Is it I think we might have to look at it properly next week. Yeah, little things make a big difference. Yeah, but there's lots of little things that you can do that can make a difference to somebody else. Yeah, and the random acts of kindness, maybe you could ask your teachers or ask your, ask your parents, or if you're allowed, maybe Google it. Yeah, but lots and lots and lots of ideas of what we can do that can share what we have with other people and make them feel special. Kind of Jesus's random acts of kindness. Yeah for back then I mean he saw 5,000 people coming and he knew they would be hungry so his random act of kindness was to make sure that everybody got fed when you think about blind Bartimaeus last week yeah uh, Bartimaeus shouted out and his little thing of shouting out, help me, meant that Jesus could do another random act of kindness of giving him back his sight. And changing his life. Changing his life. Amazing. It's really hard to do that on our own, isn't it? It is really hard to do that. And it's really hard to imagine that our little thing, like sharing our pat lunch, could make such a big difference. But it does, it could make such a big difference to somebody else. Do you think we can pray and ask God to help us with that and help us to see opportunities? I think so. So let's say a prayer. And if you agree with the words that I say at the end, just say Amen, which means I agree. Yeah. Dear Jesus, Thank you that we all have those little pet lunches that we could share. Help us to see what little things we could do that could share with somebody else and it make a big difference to them. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. That's quite exciting, isn't it? And I'm looking forward to hearing what people have been doing to help other people and to do an act of kindness random or not to help someone else but it's often those random acts of kindness that have the biggest impact isn't it the ones that are not expected so that's our challenge for you this week is to see if you can do a random act of kindness for somebody this week and we'll see you next week bye bye